Okay, welcome everybody. Um, this is Steve. Uh, we're talking to Dr. Weisfield in Canada. Thank you for coming to our uh, YouTube video. Dr. Weisfield, how's it going? It's uh, great to have the time for both of us to meet here like this. You know, I think this is a very important interaction that we've got going here. Tell me about what's going on in Canada with with uh, with yeah. Trudeau administration, the truck drivers, and what, what's what's happening. Oh, it's really freaky, you know. Like this, this is a populist, uh, right wing populist uh, movement now has about thirty percent support in population, and they've gone to Ottawa because they want to overthrow the government. Basically, they've called for the Senate, the Governor General, and the Queen to run Canada together with you know the demonstration leaders, of course. <laughs> but you see, in Canada. The Ministry of Health doesn't exist in Ottawa. You know, it's not a, a you know, cross Canada thing, you know, Ministry of Health. Every province has its own Ministry of Health. And so the policy, you know, for the mandates on vaccinations, etc., <laughs> that comes from the provinces, <laughs> has nothing to do with Ottawa. So, you know, they're in Ottawa protesting the mandates, you know, on vaccines. <laughs> and uh, they have no reason to be there in the first place, except for the underlying political uh, incentive, you know, to go and take on the government. There's also, you know, these insulting banners, you know, fuck Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada. There's a bit of a racism, you know, edge to it there as well. And one of the demonstrators, you know, I heard interviewed on the uh, local student radio station here at CKOT, saying that, oh, yes, there were some Nazi flags there. There were three Nazi flags. But, you know, like, they, you know, they weren't, uh, they weren't, you know, necessarily being supported by the demonstration, as if, you know, they didn't have the responsibility of kicking them out or beating them up. <laughs> they were just sort of normal. Exactly. One Nazi flag is enough. Yeah. So one KKK flag, one Confederate flag is enough. Yeah. You know, and if it's there and they let it stay there, that means that they, uh, you know, you know, accorded the legitimacy to be there in the first place. It cannot be allowed to stay even one second. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I agree. When, when they show it has to be literally draped down quickly and there's no no argument it has to come down same problem arises at a lot of palestinian demonstrations you know people come you know and try to uh try to get you know some attention by putting up you know some provocative you know ambiguous anti-semitic thing you know or other you know uh targeting has to come has to come down is it, it, no, it just I, I come to it, either take it down yeah. or leave you know like and palestinians back me up on that every time no problem yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. So, so what? What does it seem like at this point? Um, the the protest is continuing. We have members of some of the working class have been tricked, fooled, or con into supporting these anti-vax uh, conservative rightists. Yeah. And it appears that there are movements in Europe. Yeah. To, to, at least a a verbal a, a verbal attempt to try to spread this to Europe and the United States. What do yeah. you think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's plans to uh, take over Washington. <laughs> and, and they could do it, you know, but it's, you know, like, it's not that they have that much support, you know, in terms of activists, you know, they have, they maintain their protest in Ottawa with a couple of hundred, but a couple of hundred, you know, like truckers with trucks. Well, it doesn't look like a small little demonstration. That means nothing. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's immense, you know, it takes over the whole downtown of the city. Okay, and then on the weekends they get, you know, popular support there coming out to back them up as well. And then they close down the, uh, you know, the, the bridge to the United States, Detroit. Uh, a quarter of, the, of uh, Canada U.S. trade goes through that br bridge, you know. So <laughs> Biden had to call up, you know, the Prime Minister of Canada and tell him, you know, that he'd better do something about it. So then he finally sent the police and they just cleared off, you know, a, a few dozen uh, truckers, you know. And, and they were letting them, you know, close down the border. If it was anybody else, you know, they'd be, they'd be long gone. And we, you know, they, and they wouldn't be just long gone to be free. They'd be long gone in prison too. Yeah. That's, that's very true. I mean, you, it's really interesting when rightists make their, like the, uh, t the attempted coup on January 6th, hmm. rightists make their stances, their kid gloves are put on by them, by the cops, and initially in D.C. they were kid gloves put on by the cops mm -hmm. and the army and the National Guard. Mm -hmm. But if if uh, if a if, an, if a community organization based on demands for justice and equality were to try such a thing, they would really be arrested. It would be no mm -hmm. no problem. 
this is get them off the streets, but I mean, necessary. That's it. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. Including beatings. Oh, inclu including. I mean, in Portland, in Portland, a couple of years ago, when it was many Black Lives Matter demonstrations were going on, it's been exposed. Portland activists said something was going on at the time, mm -hmm. but the media tried to cover it up. The mm -hmm. FBI came in. The um, some secret. Secret federal agencies came and were just taking people off the street. They were just taking them in the streets, put them in these these dark vans, and no one ever knew what happened. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they, they were taking people off the streets. Literally, it wasn't no there yeah. was no issue about your rights. No, just get rid of you. Get you get out of here. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I'm, I I think everyone's watching. Everyone, a lot of people are watching what's happening in Canada. What I found very interesting about Canada is that it's. It seems to me the way politics is organized around here, around there, a certain level of allowance was given to the demonstrators. Mm. I don't, I don't, I'm trying to recall like mass rebellions, lootings, demonstrations that kind of quote, quote, got out of hand in Canada. Um, mm. I, know that there are many, but I'm sure there have been, but they don't get the same media attention that they do here. It seems as though these truckers, the, the, the political people behind this movement knew they, they, they could get, get away with it for a while. Uh, or, or, or perhaps they had allies in the in, Oh, yes. You know, you know, they have backing okay. from, uh, from police. You know, right. they're getting uh, contributions right. from, from police, from uh, right. they're getting, you know, uh, uh, people from the military. A lot of them have been... Uh, uh, our uh, ex-military, and right. they're getting funded, you know, from the Conservative Party of Canada as well. Right, right, right. So the, and those guys, they don't have to go to work, you know, they're just sitting there, <laughs> you know, that's it. And so you have this political support that they obviously have, mm. and they know the terrain of the, of the Canadian political scene, mm. and they pull this off, and they've been successful. Mm. And like it or not, they were successful in um, blocking blocking roads, closing down border crossings, impacting, impacting the profits of major corporations. And, uh, you know, they can sit back, okay, this time we got this, next time we do this. Yeah. So I thought it was very, very interesting. You know, in, in this country, last week there was an expose, the CIA, well, no one should be, so, first, first of all, I have no, so no legitimacy in the CIA as following the law. We're not concerned they break the law whenever they want to break it. Mm -hmm. they, they do whatever they want to do. But there was some exposés recently about the um, CIA um, keeping files on American citizens. And there was some big to do. Some senators wrote some letters. Some of them were released to the press. Um, they were redacted, of course. It was always the thing. We have to redact this. What they're keeping, what files are they keeping on Americans? Um, it, it, it was a big story, but the American news cycle just churns stories. Unless it's something that's so-called earth shattering. When it comes to intelligence agencies, okay, earth story, now the sporting event, <laughs> uh, now the weather, you know, this kind of thing. Mm. But this has been keeping files on Americans. And this is what forced, forced Edward Snowden to leave, to, to, to uh, seek exile. Um, uh, a few, a few years ago, um, and it's just it's telling that groups like the Maoist internationalist movement have always warned leftists. They've warned us, not be, don't be so free about your information, about who you are, how you do things, about your telephone and your telephone records. I was a, I was warned by an activist twenty years ago, a uh, young a brother named Al Thrasher. He said, make sure that you conduct yourself or your affairs in a way that can't, they can't bring scrutiny to you because the cops are out there, they're looking at what you do, they're keeping files, whether it's legal or not, to try and profile you and also keep records of what you're doing. Yeah. And I just find it interesting that these, these agencies do what they want to do, get away with whatever they want to get away with, and there's no accountability mm -hmm. ever. There's no, there's no accountability, which shows you know, the strength, the strength they have within the capitalist framework. I find it very interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's the same thing, you know, with the nation state of Israel. You know, the, their state, you know, 
works for itself. I mean, and it exists not only in the territory that it administers, you know, both the occupied territories and, it, and its principal territories, it operates, you know, like elsewhere, wherever the Jewish people are living. Every Jewish organization is taken over by a, a state institution directed by, you know, the Zionist money and, and the Zionist state officials even, you know. Here in Canada, the Canadian Jewish Congress was shut down by Bernie Farber. He even threatened to beat me up when I objected to at the plenary of the Canadian Jewish Congress. And they shut it down. They replaced it by the uh, uh, Israel Jewish, Canada Israel Jewish uh, uh, affairs committee, <laughs> you know, something like that, you know, totally controlled, you know, by the Zionist bloc. And, uh, you know, they're backed by the, you know, the Jewish national bourgeoisie, you know, which is pro-Zionist because they're Canadian Jewish. They don't care about, you know, like anything because they've, you know, got themselves a secure place. And so they think that, you know, they just need, you know, Israel as a backup, you know, in case the national bourgeoisie has to flee. That's about as far as their Jewish, you know, national interests carry them. And then they, you know, stop any sort of, you know, fight against real anti-Semitism here because they happen to be allies of Israel. So, you know, they're totally useless. Yeah, nation state, you know, it's got to go. I mean, you know, like it was founded by Hegel in Prussia in 1648, you know, like who the heck needs that stuff again? And it's caused all those wars in Europe. And then the Holocaust was based upon that principal idea as well. No, it's disgusting. Yeah. But, um... Can you can you review that one more time about the role of the Israeli state in controlling Jewish organizations internationally? This is something that I that I wasn't aware of at all. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, I mean, the uh, the United States is a uh, APAC, which is uh, right. Right. The APAC. Uh, I don't know if they've ever ever taken a position critical of Israel. No, oh, of course not. They're, 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 I mean, they're, they're essentially the, Jew, the Israeli lobby inside the United States. That's who they are. They're more than that. They're also the Christian uh, Zionist lobby at the same time. They formed an alliance and they have a joint membership. You know, it's not a Jewish organization in, anymore. Right, right, right. No, it's right. a Zionist organization. And, they, and they're so funded. It's incredible. You know, like they spend, have an annual budget of like 35 million compared to, let's say, Jewish Voice for Peace. You know, maybe they have Maybe they have 500,000 or something, you know, like Soros, you know, he backs J Street. Okay. The one Jewish bourgeois. He's not really sort of, you know, like, a, 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 he's a speculator. He's, he's more of a speculator than a, than a, than a bourgeois, you know, he's made his money off of the, uh, the, the British pound. He's sterling <laughs> in speculation, financial speculation. It's sort of funny. But he backs J Street, which is, you know, liberal Zionist organization. Right. They have come out critical of Israel at times. Right. As well. Yeah. And now Amnesty International has declared Israel to be an apartheid state. You know, they should look at amazing, you know, an amazing story. They got <laughs> amazing story. They got sunk in the press. An amazing story. Yeah. An amazing story because Israel has the Zionist government. Of Israel has, has persistently denounced this analysis of Israel as an apartheid state um, and anybody who um, supports such a view is considered an enemy of Israel. Yeah. So it's international to say this and there no, are no revolutionaries by far, you know, no they're not. Yeah. But for them to say this um, is clearly a victory to a certain extent within those circles of the analysis that Israel is an apartheid state. Because yeah. the Jewish Israel fundamentally considers that analysis to be an anathema to Israel's existence. Yeah, 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 yeah. They say they're apartheid, it, it just brings uh, legitimacy to the cause for Palestinian freedom. Yeah, and it, it makes me think as well, you know, that the United States should be declared an apartheid state as well, but they won't do that. No, they don't. No, they, they won't do it, but if, if 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 those who are engaged in the mass struggles continue to expose the prison, the, the prison, the imprisonment of activists, especially, especially the imprisonment until death of activists. Yeah. This is this is this is where I think the US and because this is where I think the US state and federal prison agencies and the and the role of I know, I, I know I can't prove it. The role of the government in making sure these, these sisters and brothers stay in jail. They want to make sure that activists who are imprisoned 
don't get out or they commit suicide. Yeah. Uh, right now there's a campaign to free uh, Leonard Peltier. He has he has coronavirus, which yeah. is ravaging the which is ravaging the prisons. Um, and there's a campaign to get him released. Yeah. And, as far as I'm concerned, I maybe mean, I hope I'm not wrong. I think Peltier will die in prison. Mm. I, I don't want to make the statement like that too loudly. But Peltier could have dropped a dime on what happened on the Pine Ridge River Reservation years ago. He refuses to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because he's principled. Yeah. And Obama passed on getting him out of jail. Yeah. I don't expect Biden to sign a document to get him to, because he's in federal prison. Yeah. Okay, he did so he's out, you know. Mm. Um, and I'm, so I, and I hope my statement isn't meant to say I denounce pro programs to free him. I think we have to educate more people about Peltier's case, but they want him. They want him to die in prison or get out in two weeks. He's dead. Yeah. So many people who they, they've been let out two weeks later, they're dead. Does that, does that, Call compassion release. Okay, well, it will we'll release you so we don't have to handle your handle your uh, funeral. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know, so you die you die outside and not here, but we ain't get done no time soon. And I hope people who watch this show will you know use their social media to promote the freedom of of Peltier and all and all anti imperialist anti colonialist, anti racist prisoners yeah. in U.S. jails around the world. Uh, because he, the demonstration was last last uh, Monday at federal at federal I think federal out of federal court, courthouses or def, different people places places different places around the country, and um, his case is very important. Um, I mentioned I knew, I mentioned on this program before a few years ago I, was, I heard a program on this radio radio show about. Somebody was on a program. It was sound kind of reactionary. So I kind of do an internet deal of research on them. But I found out there's a group called the X Special Agents of the FBI. Right? Okay. It, I mean, a group. The X Special Agents group, whatever. Yeah. And I did a little investigation of them. And lo and behold, they had a campaign to make sure that uh, Peltier didn't get any, any kind of support for his, his release. Uh, the worry then, because they were, were organizing, they were organizing their people to yeah. write Obama and say, "Don't, don't release." And I had no idea this even existed. Yeah. yeah. So I, them, I heard some on the radio. They sound kind of huh, mm, sound weird. Let me do, look them up. Yeah. So <laughs> we need to know that the people who are the ruling class and their allies are steadfast against our freedom fighters being released. Yeah. This group is an example. I, no one even knew that they were doing this. I ran across this by researching the internet. Wow. By Obama, make sure that he does not release Peltier. Wow, wow. Yes, so I, guess, I saw uh, it myself. I guess the efforts you know, are significant and having an effect, and so they're getting worried. Okay. They get, right, they get worried, exactly. Yeah. exactly. I have, uh, there's a similar case, you know, of uh, a uh, political prisoner, you know, with the uh, Black, uh, Black Revolutionary Army, I think it was, <coughs> Shakar who is, uh, has cancer and he's dying uh, as well. But uh, Leonard Peltier's case is more imminent. But I wrote him a letter. I was very impressed, you know, with this history. And I have his, uh, I have the letter that I sent to him, you know, and if I get a letter back from him, then, I, then I'll read that as well, you know. But um, I have it here, dear comrade, doctor, he's an uh, acupuncture type right. of doctor. Uh, <clears throat> Matulu Shakur, yes. yes. Yeah, uh, Matulu Shakur. And together yes. with Steve Struggle, one of our early young members of the Black Panther Party, we have been discussing for his YouTube channel, Pantherism, the fate and history of the Black activists and organizers of the Black Nation found in the United States of America. During our discussions, we have developed a, commit, a, a commitments and strategy to help build a political prisoner solidarity network internationally. We are encouraging yes. listeners to engage with the political prisoners listed. And having looked up your case at the political prisoner's website, I found a great interest in writing to you. My identification with your plight arises not only for current reasons, in terms of liberating all the various social formations, particularly working class formations and nationalities. To identify with you is for me, for much more profound reasons, because of my own family history. You see, with the help uh, of the, uh, the brother of my mother, she escaped from the Warsaw Ghetto in 1941. 
she was a young Jewish socialist Bundist, and set up an underground railway with her brother out from the ghetto into the forest in Russia. Subsequently, with the invasion of the Nazis, he became a partisan resistance fighter, okay? The partisans, you know, were dis denounced as terrorists by the Nazi occupation for doing so, for resisting the occupation, <laughs> resisting extermination, res resisting death, you know? To actually accuse black national militants, the United States of America, to be a danger to the general public is in my mind equivalent, equivalent to what the Nazis were calling the Jewish partisans to, as terrorists. Now, being born in Toronto in 1948 as a refugee kid with a Jewish princess mother, this has led me to express my solidarity with you, your life's work and purpose. And so uh, seeking to be as brief as possible in this introduction, I wish you to maintain your health. Looking forward to your thoughts for the work necessary to express our solidarity with the political prisoners in the United States, seeking your general amnesty, your honoring and compensation for having lost life, liberty and happiness. But the pursuit of happiness for all and not just one provides a certain satisfaction in any case. That's what it is. That's an excellent letter. Thank you for writing it. I'm, I'm yeah. really impressed. I was Thank impressed you very much. You know, I was really sort of, you know, wanting to tell him, you know, how I felt. So I hope he gets it. Well, I hope he gets it. I hope he gets it. I hope that he's able to correspond with you. And I hope that we're able to use this program as a way of uh, sharing the strengths and legitimacy and dignity of so many of, of our women and men, our youth and our elders who are held down in the prisons because they fight for revolution and for so, and for freedom for for the oppressed. Thank you very much for that letter that you sent him. That was that was an excellent shine of solidarity. Thank you. Okay, so, so uh, you know I, I I'd like uh, you know I've read it you know to the uh, <clears throat> to our uh, channels in order to uh, get it circulated so people know about him. Right. And uh, you know right. uh, perhaps we'll help to get the letter through the censorship at the prison as well. Right. Exactly. So, Wazo, thanks for spending the time with us today in this conversation, and we'll talk to you next week. Very good. Bye-bye.